Okay, let's do this. Can everybody hear me? How is the transmission? Am I visible? Am I audible? Okay. I can see and hear you. That's great, John. Uh, welcome, everyone, to another webinar by Meyer Sound. Uh, today, I'm honored to have a guest lecture on our call, which is our uh, Director of Business Development, uh, John Menito. Um, let me share my screen to uh, show you uh, the opening slides. So there we go, John Menito, uh, Director of Business Development. Um, today, we're going to talk about Intelligent DC. That is to say, John is going to talk about Intelligent DC, a global view. Uh, but before we do so, uh, please allow me to uh, familiarize those that are not um, familiar with the Zoom platform that we're using. Because we encourage you to ask questions, um, but in order to do so in an orderly fashion, we would like you to make use of the chat feature. So in front of you, you are expected to have a window, not unlike the one you see over here. If you want to see who else is joining you on the call, there is a button in the bottom of that window called Participants. If you click on that button, uh, a window pane pops up to the right side. And there you can see the fellow participants uh, that are joining you on today's webinar. Notice that in the bottom of that window, there is a button called Raise Hand. So whenever you feel like asking a question, please do so by pressing the Raise Hand button. That means that in the corner of my eye, I will see a blue hand pop up which informs me that you're about to ask a question at which point I will try to find a white space in John's narrative and interrupt him to pose um, your question however in order to ask your question we encourage you to make use of the chat feature which you can activate by clicking on the balloon icon with the word chat underneath it you see that it's pretty self-explanatory at the bottom there is a text field where you can enter a message and address the nation or should you happen to see a family uh, member or a fellow colleague uh, in the participants, then you can also address the message to that person in private. That basically consults, uh, uh, concludes the housekeeping of the um, Zoom video communication platform. Uh, for those that are joining us on Facebook Live, welcome. You are currently visiting our uh, user community Facebook group. And, uh, and watching our webinar through that um, channel. The Facebook uh, group currently has over 8,500 members and um, the more the merrier, I would say. So all webinars we've been doing up until today are all in the, in the framework which we call the precision tool set. These are the tools that we use to design but ultimately all the way to deployment of a sound system. It's a turnkey uh, solution. And what John is going to discuss, Intelligent DC, plays an integral part, is a pillar of that um, precision tool set. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, the next hour where uh, John will talk at great length about Intelligent uh, DC, our Director of Business Development. Um, that's all that I have. Um, uh, I would say, John, uh, take it away. Thanks, Merlin. Uh, I will share my, put my screen up. And share. So you now see the opening slide? Yes, sir, I do. Great. Um, uh, so I'm excited about talking about something that I've always been very passionate about and, um, and uh, kind of covering it uh, within uh, this uh, webinar is uh, a bit more about the advantages that Intelligent DC has in uh, in so many projects, and it's going to be—it's been interesting to see this, this all kind of grow as a product line for Meyer Sound um, over the years. Um, so, what we're going to be doing is talking about um, what is Intelligent DC. Uh, Raul did an amazing job uh, on Wednesday with going over a lot of key components, and I'm borrowing some of his slides. I hope he's okay with that. Um, but you'll see um, in this webinar that uh, kind of recaps some of the hardware parts of it. Um, and really what, what, it's, what, what makes up uh, this, this system and why it makes sense um, on these projects um, and what uses it has, um, the products that we offer in the Intelligent DC line, and then as uh, the title suggests, really a lot of case studies and where we're finding uh, Intelligent DC uh, being installed into so many different applications now. And that, as I mentioned, that's, that's a growing, growing world. 
So the heart of the reason we called it Intelligent DC really came down to um, uh, some conversations that we had with R and D when they were de when they were really de de further developing the power supply, the newest uh, power supply, the 488 HP. Um, the original 488 was a basic 48 volt supply, but a lot of work in R and D has been was done on that supply to make it very robust for for audio, for the dynamics of audio and sound, and how um, you know demanding a DC supplied system that had a key supply that could be remoted um, was going to be was was going to be able to handle all the various you know cable links and things like that. Um, and then R and D when they were developing the higher powered version of it, they rethought how it handled every output, how it was designed to be able to really kind of work and handle the various um, uh, issues that come up with, with using uh, five wires to connect these loudspeakers uh, remotely from, uh, from, the, um, from these supplies. And so there was a tremendous amount of work that was done in the supply and it came down to you know some of the utilizations that every output could handle uh, situations differently, um, and we had you know uh, kind of intelligent ways of being able to monitor it, uh, both through this remote RMS way, which I'll talk about here in a minute, as well as the front panel and the LEDs that are on on the actual power supply, the MPS four eighty eight. So um, as Roll talked about, there's different. Um, indicators for if there's any issues, if there's any kind of faults on the line, um, and every one of them handles them separately. There's no, like it doesn't take down the entire supply. Um, it's really per output, it very carefully handles um, uh, uh, those those issues as an independent output on the eight, eight outputs of the MPS-488. And so that was part of really what made this system, um, it kind of lent us to thinking that you know, naming the low voltage line of products, which we had at the time, which were 18 and then 48. Um, and we've simply standardized on 48 volts um, for everything now um, with the MPS 48 HP and, and renamed it uh, a, a line of intelligent DC products. Now, um, sorry, wrong way. The uh, other addition that makes it um, really interesting is that we added the on the HP version, we were able to add RMS. And RMS allows us to monitor the supply, monitor all the outputs of the supply um, by adding this module, which is optional, um, in this little red squared area, so that you can, from Compass, which is the same interface that we would be monitoring Gal uh, Galaxy processors, Galileo processors, um, you have an RMS tab and you can monitor every self-powered loudspeaker out there, including the power supplies, the 488 HP power supplies. And you have the same kind of control that you would, uh, for the most part, on, on the eight outputs of the MPS 488. You have the ability to wink a loudspeaker. Um, you can check the state of each output. You can see the current, the quiescent current going through the supply. Even though um, audio is really just being passed through the MPS 488, you're able to see the current um, level that's that that the speaker is demanding, and you get a VU activity, you know, very similar to a VU activity of what the supply is de is demanding in terms of voltage. Um, you see peak and and, and idle current, um, and you can also mute every output on the 488 um, or solo up the supply. Um, and from uh, from RMS, this is within within Compass. You'd be able to monitor both uh, low voltage products, all the intelligent DC products, as well as the AC powered. And you can do a custom layout so that you can see everything working together and how it's how it's behaving. Now, um, we had a single power supply called the 41 for a number of years, a 48 supply that you could just you know power one loudspeaker. Um, and it went end of life. And so our R&D team got together and uh, built the, uh, and designed the 482. And they made this supply very similar to be able to, or, uh, you know, a uh, similar supply that could do a number of things like the 481, which is typically being remoted. Um, so the supply is closer to loudspeakers um, or it can be back in a rack. So this is a dual purpose supply. Instead of it being a single output, it's two. Um, it can handle, 
everything that the 488 can handle. It's basically two channels of a 488. Um, and it uh, both can be, two can be rack mounted in a single rack space, so side by side. Um, and we make a rack tray for that. Or they can be mounted, you know, on the inside uh, wall of a rack, or can actually be mounted potentially um, out on a structure um, in, uh, in a ceiling wall so that when we're starting to do, do work where um, uh, the installations have to uh, be, you know, uh, a further distance than what the, the cable link would allow, the 482 is a great solution for that. And John, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that unit also doesn't have a fan, right? So I can use it in the house without it making any noise or distract me uh, in, in any other way. Yeah, it's a good point, Merlin. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, it's a fanless device. So it's, uh, it's, it's really quiet for that reason. Um, and uh, really, uh, most all of, all of our Intelligent DC products are, are fanless. So the, so the 48 volt allows us to do that. Um, in the case of wiring, uh, if you if you tuned in on Wednesday, you saw uh, Raul's um, uh, uh, version of this drawing, um, which is the the simple cable uh, the, the cabling of the system. Um, I'll I'll talk about components here in a minute, but Ashby's can be looped, and we accommodated that with a dual uh, Phoenix connector on all the Ashby eight Cs and five Cs. Um, our UPJs. Uh, UP4, UP4 Slims, MM4s, MM10s, and all the HMS are all just single wire. The only thing that took us to a dual wire for the HMS 15, which is the one on the far left in this image, is that in order to keep this all class two wiring within, so that it met code to not have to be in conduit, is we had to share the DC outputs for two outputs of the supply. And that's why there's two wires running to a 15. But in HMS 12 and on down are all still still single wires, and there's that uh, kind of a, a close-up of the Phoenix connector and the wiring. So three conductors are doing audio, and the other two are doing DC, as shown here. Um, and then the RMS option would go to the supply. It would be a twisted pair, same RMS cabling that we use now for every other loudspeaker. The RMS it just basically becomes one RMS node on from the arm server to the power supply and then you're able to monitor those eight outputs just as i showed earlier um, and then uh, the galaxy is the galaxy processor is oftentimes the input patch um, from that now what's interesting is um, the galaxy is um, what we're going to be introducing this year or uh, launching this year is taking advantage of more of the power of Galaxy. Um, Galaxy is our loudspeaker processing system. You know, it has uh, all the filtering and, and, and control and drives uh, signals to be able to drive our, our large PA systems as well as our installed products. And um, what's coming this year is um, us taking advantage of the matrix and being able to do more turn this into more of a creative tool like what we've done on dimitri with um space map we're gonna we're gonna be launching space map go on galaxy this year um and we've been showing it for the last say year year and a half um at various trade shows uh, uh and what this allows us to do is a fully immersive system utilizing galaxy um, we can network them with ABB between galaxies and increase the matrix size so that we can utilize that. And, and a galaxy connected to an MPS-488 um, for, fully, for a full low voltage system would be an amazing immersive system um, that can be installed into a number of applications. Um, so the products that we offer, some products we offer both AC and, and intelligent DC versions of them, like the UPJ. Um, UP Junior, which is kind of coming, being replaced by the X20, <coughs> um, is also uh, both AC and, and DC version. But the um, in the current product line, the MM4, the M uh, the directional version, the MM4, the XPD, um, the UP4 and UP4 Slim are both um, only DC versions. And then, like I said, the UPJ. And I don't know if you, if everyone understands that this, that a UPJ 
XP version is the same power output, same sonic performance as the AC version, as the one with the supply built into it. There's no really change. You, you don't lose any power by, by going to an, uh, an uh, XP version. Yeah, you're, you're not taking a performance hit because you go for exactly. XP. It's exactly. like you get the same bang for buck. That's right. And the same, of course, now with um, the new and uh, the soon to be launched uh, Ultra X20. Well, we kind of launched it this year, but it's starting to, it'll start to ship uh, mid summer. And so the, the Ultra X20 will both have an AC version, just be called the X20. There'll also be a 22 and a 23 with two other horn options. Um, and those same three options will be available with XP so that they can be run off of, of both the 42 and the 488 power supplies. So um, you see a, a, a huge demand for that. Now, our cinema surrounds have always been only available in the XP versions. So the HMS-5, uh, originally was the HMS-10. Then we, we needed some smaller ones for um, uh, some of the cinema post-production rooms. And uh, the HMS-5 was um, kind of sized up for that. Uh, and uh, then we did the 12 as Atmos needed more powerful um, overheads for, um, uh, for that format. And then the HMS 15. And the HMS 15 is also oftentimes used as a screen speaker in addition to being a surround or overhead for Atmos. Um, so these four products only are available in the AC versions. I mean, the, uh, the intelligent DC version, sorry. <laughs> Um, so, uh, it, we, I mean, for a number of years, we had our Stella loudspeakers, which was an 18 volt design. They were replaced as we standardized on the 48 volt Intelligent DC products. Um, the new, um, our new in ceiling speaker or in wall speaker, H Ashby could be either in wall or in ceiling, um, is a part of that Intelligent DC line and it's all 48 volts. So it runs off the same supply. The advantage of the 5C and 8C is that you can actually parallel these, as I talked about earlier. And um, uh, with, you know, Constellation is a huge, has a huge demand for, we, we extend the range of any Constellation system so that it's broadband. Um, low end reverberation is as important as mid high reverberation. So um, subs are always in uh, Constellation installs. And MM10 has been there um, sub of choice typically in most of their installations and most every constellation system is almost all intelligent DC uh, products. We can use MM4s, we can use Ashby's, uh, UPJs and um, uh, uh, UPMs in constellation. So MM10 has been their, their one of choice and now this year we're introducing the, U, the USW112 in an XP version as well. So that will be available to expand and that'll have more a little more headroom than the mm10 does now john um, um yeah sorry for the interruption uh, for those that are not yep. familiar with constellation because we haven't discussed constellation yet in this series of webinars um i know it's a it's a, a, a i'm asking a lot but could you explain in a few sentences what constellation is for those that are not familiar with it sure yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about karlinski here in a minute so i can go a little bit further into it but thanks that's that's good to know in terms of the series and uh, I'll get deeper into it here in a second. Um, so MM10 um, also has, there's one version of the MM10 AC or uh, AC version that actually has two 48 volt outputs on it. And so you can power an intelligent DC product um, from the MM10. And so we designed this so that we could um, do small post-production rooms with MM10s with mid-high loudspeakers. Um, this year too, and if we have time at the end, um, we're also, um, the AMI sub has, the, we, we've done a lot of work on the AMI sub so that we can actually make that a post-production product and uh, have a combining input card. That's really not part of the Intelligent DC product line, but I wanted to, uh, I can touch on that if we, if we have time at the very end. And so that output um, on the ACX version will power those intelligent DC products. Um, yeah, and I really kind of covered the, the USW 112, um, but the that is um, that's also going to be shipping mid-year. 
So um, a global view of projects. This is really kind of really what, what, what I think you, uh, uh, the, the, the webinar is all about, is really what applications are we using these intelligent DC products in? And what we're finding as um, Rel covered some of these, these are some of his slides, um, it's, they're finding their way into all kinds of projects. Um, from uh, restaurants, like uh, the Buddha Bar in Mexico to um, uh, museums, um, obviously the post-production rooms, um, uh, hospitality. Uh, they allow us to do fill loudspeakers like MM4s and UP4 Slims and, and uh, other you know, uh, directional loudspeakers. We also see it, uh, the um, Ultra X20 as being a good delay speaker for theaters and under balcony or distributed systems because et cetera. We have three, the three horns, the 110 by 110 or the 50 by 80. Um, so it, it allows us that wide variety of options. So uh, the Intelligent DC allows us to put that into a lot of installs. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, I just wanted to compliment what you said to mention that the Ultra X20 also has a smaller footprint than its predecessor, the UB Junior. So it's also a smaller package overall. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so uh, Raul, uh, who has was very involved in Dubai Mall, also talked quite a bit about the scale and how much Intelligent DC product was used in this project, and, and it had a it had a demand to be able to 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 do high intelligibility, well controlled sound in in that installation. Um, uh, but really, one of the things that is exciting about about um, about intelligent DC is that with the volume of microphones and loudspeakers that get, get installed in a constellation system, um, you know the density of loudspeakers and microphones kind of goes up depending upon the reverberation demand of the of the application as well as the height of the ceiling. Um, that changes the scale of the system, and every output. Um, is typically a separate output from the processor. So uh, in order to decorrelate it correctly, a constellation system, um, uh, you really need um, a very simple way of being able to install the system. And yet, um, uh, so it's all point-to-point -point wiring, one loudspeaker to one processor output, which is basically one pass through on the power supply um, and what it does is it gives us that ability to um, uh, to to put in a system very simply um, uh, an, an integrator, very, you know, very straightforward a home home run cable system that um, allows us allows the constellation constellation systems to really work. Um, so um, as Merlin mentioned, I guess we haven't really covered constellation what it does. It is a um, constellation is our um, acoustic system that allows you to basically make the room whatever acoustic, well, almost every whatever acoustic you want it to be. We can take an existing acoustic and extend the reverberation time. So we can add early reflections, we can add warmth, we can add brightness, um, and extend it out from its native acoustic. We can't take anything away. Uh, that would have to be done with passive absorbers, but the um, what constellation does is it adds echoes, it adds reverberation, and it has amazing applications to add good early reflections and strength into a room so that we can have simple voice lift, we call it, so that in, in a project like this, um, it typically what it's doing is it's adding ER, adding early reflections so that we have good clarity in the room, and it's in, in helping intelligibility or it's helping these rooms so that you don't really... Um, people can hear each other much easier um, and interact with a professor or interact with each other um, in these spaces or turn the extend the reverberation time out a little bit further and then you can perform music in these spaces um, at this installation in sweden at karolinska the this is a typical rack room power supplies are racked up um, uh, uh, next to each other and then they're next to the processors. So the uh, processor outputs are directly inputted into the power supplies, which as I mentioned, are all home runs to the loudspeakers. And the microphones would be coming in, in the case of Constellation, because it's taking that existing reverberation and uh, regenerating it into the space. That would be going directly into the, um, 
the DAI, DAI processors of the Dimitri system. Um, this is another shot of uh, Kalinska and uh, the meeting space in that sp in that room, in that configuration. Um, one interesting installation here in California, I'm actually in California, so um, is down in San Jose at the McHenry Convention Center. The new hall there is 100% um, all overhead um, Intelligent DC products. And so this is a full uh, reconfigurable room. Obviously there's, you know, there's air walls. I think maybe one or two air walls in the space so that you can segment and zone, this, zone the room. That's, there's nothing new there. But um, it gives us the ability to do, you know, very high dynamic range, self-powered loudspeaker systems into a space, into a convention center space, like uh, this convention center. And it, it completely um, disappears in the ceiling. Uh, yeah, it does. Cosmetically, it's like, if you don't know where to look, you're not even seeing it. Yeah. Um, so the National Museum in the Netherlands, this is uh, another example of, uh, of where a lot of our smaller products can, can disappear, as Merlin was mentioning, into these spaces. Um, the MM4s can be color matched and oftentimes are put into spaces so that they, uh, because of their size and their, their power output, they're able to um, really be used in really tight spaces and, and disappear into venues. Um, weather protection, uh, Raul talked about this the other day, and this is his slide. Um, weather protection is a big part of um, what we're doing with uh, Intelligent DC. It's finding its way into outdoor installs um, in, in many cases. Um, uh, so there's more and more venues that are that are using it in those kind of applications. Uh, at Lemur, there is over 40 power supplies, um, over 300 XP, uh, XP loudspeakers, Intelligent DC loudspeakers throughout the venue. Um, it's all UP4s and MM10s, and it's all weather protected. National Museum of Qatar is requirements were, you know, high end, high fidelity. Um, the reason we're doing, you know, the reason that you, you move into an intelligent DC product is that you want that high peak to average. Um, and uh, you want the high fidelity of these systems to be able to produce music more clearly than oftentimes what we can do with um, a low voltage, another low voltage solution that has been typically around for years, which is, which is like 70 volts. And the other interesting thing is that um, when you have systems that are very linear, that have pi peak to average, that are low in distortion, you end up with better, better uses of it for commercial installations like um, uh, meeting spaces, especially when you start introducing echo cancellation. Echo cancellation works really, work, works better if you have linear systems, if you have linear microphones and you have linear loudspeakers um, and you end up with better clarity. And the other thing that um, I often have talked about is the advantage of a lower distortion system is that you get, you have less ear fatigue when you're listening, when you're sitting into a meeting or listening to a lecture or you're, you're listening to um, a reinforced system over a long, prolonged period of time. A high, higher distortion system can be just wear on you more than than systems that are much lower in distortion and so we win in those areas um the san francisco museum of modern art is has a theater in it with a constellation system as well as a um a cinema system as well as a pa system all three are in this museum i'm um, in san francisco at the Cafe Vivaldi in Copenhagen. Oops, sorry, I misspelled Copenhagen. <laughs> Just realized that. Um, uh, it's all Intelligent DC, distributed throughout the restaurant. We did a we do a temporary installation using our HMS uh, our uh, HMS um, surrounds and overheads for the Telluride Film Festival in Colorado. Um, so. Those are put in every year um, for the festival. So some theaters are ha have systems in it, and then others are temporary installations like this one, the Telluride. Um, this is a, an ex another example of an outdoor installation that uh, the Camus Vineyards in Napa. Uh, the De Young Museum in San Francisco has uh, Intelligent DC, both 
our some of our point source loudspeakers like MM4s and HMS and MM10s as well as um, or the HMS is the is, is more from the cinema line. And Bill Fontana is a sound artist that Meyer Sound has been working with for years. The little story behind Bill is um, the MM4, the original 48 volt loudspeaker, um, was actually done, built, and and designed around a project that Bill had in Lyon, France, um, where they had to be installed and fitted into these um, uh, light channels in Lyon um, above these railway platforms. So the first installation that we ever did with a 48 volt system was for Bill um, and the MM4 was built um, at the time. And that installation, the, the size of the MM4 was kind of around that channel that um, was a, so it was a structural size requirement to be able to, to fit that in. And Bill has continued to use um, our products whenever he can in, in his art installations throughout the world. Um, and this is one that I believe was in London. Um, and I think he's done echoes in a few other cities over the years. But uh, this is all uh, UPJ uh, XPs. And that's the kind of the core of the of the the um, slides that I have. So I give us lots of time for questions. Awesome. That's uh, great. Um, much, 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 much appreciated. So um, for those that are joining us on the call, um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask, um, now is about the time. Um, please make use of the chat function and let me know uh, whether there's anything that uh, John can answer regarding uh, today's topic, which is a global view of intelligent deceit. Okay, well, I think that the story was clear and um, and that there's no need for uh, questions. With uh, that being said, um, I would like to follow up with some uh, closing comments um, regarding um, today's presentation. And for that, I will uh, share my screen once more. Uh, once again, um, I would like to express my gratitude to John for being on today's uh, webinar, giving us a global view of intelligent DC. As of um, as John mentioned earlier today, um, this is the week of Intelligent DC. So uh, there's another webinar that um, discusses Intelligent DC, which was by Rahul Samuel, uh, support specialist, uh, Middle East. Um, and you will find that webinar as well as today's webinar. You will find those on YouTube channel, which I will mention uh, later once more. Uh, next week is going to be the week of Cal. And in that week, um, we're going to, uh, on Monday, I will be doing an introduction into uh, CAL, which is our column array loudspeaker that allows us to steer sound. Um, um, my colleague Oscar Barrientos will talk about the same topics uh, on Tuesday, May 5th. And then I'm very much looking forward to Wednesday because Wednesday we will be joined uh, in a case study by Martin Reich and Jose Godin of Fête de Vigneron, which is a big, big, uh, festival that happens in Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, that's going to be uh, something that's going to be very impressive, very captivating. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, what else is going to happen next week? Um, Friday, we will have our second on demand session. Um, our first on demand session, which was um, um, two weeks ago almost, is where we discuss power scaling at your request. Uh, now you get to choose from Montreux Jazz, M Noise, and Roskilde Festival. Uh, whichever you end up choosing is the one that we will be covering in the on demand session next Friday. Uh, if you want to make your preference known, please go to the Meyer Sound User Community Facebook group where you will find the poll in the announcements that allows you to choose uh, your preferred option. Um, today's webinar. As you've come to expect from us, today's webinar will be uploaded as soon as possible to the uh, Thinking Sound YouTube channel where you will find all webinars, uh, both the English ones and the Spanish ones. English one webinars always take place on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whereas the Spanish ones take place on Tuesday and Thursday. All of those you can find on the YouTube channel. And that means that um, 
on behalf of myself and John and Meyer Sound, um, we would like to thank you for being here today. Uh, I can see that there are still no questions at this point, which means that we're done for today. Uh, happy weekend. Uh, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And best to you and your loved ones. Bye-bye. Thanks.